Hello there and welcome to Classic Golf Clubs. Today I'm going to be looking at one of the smaller Scottish manufacturers, Norrie Thompson. This will be a two part video. In part one I'll review the clubs and the history of Norrie Thompson and in part two I'll take the clubs to the course and see how I get on playing some holes with them. Here are the time checks should you wish to skip ahead. Right, let's get started. Right, starting with the woods as usual. We've got the uh, Slazinger one wood here that I've featured before. Very nice club. It's been refurbished at some point, I'm not sure when. Uh, it's probably uh, a 1960s club, maybe late 1950s. There's no shaft band on there, but very nice club. And then we've got uh, an American club, unusually for me. Uh, anybody that knows McGregor will recognise the VIP name, VIP Limited. Uh, and it's a McGregor. There's anything on the bottom there? It just says by McGregor VIP. And this is a three wood. Got the serial number there. The shaft on this one is a McGregor Tawny Taper 2, which is a medium or regular flex. The grip on it is a McGregor original grip, Tawny grip, not too bad condition. So that's the woods very quickly uh, summarised. And now on to the irons. Uh, unusual set this one by Norrie Thompson who was a uh, manufacturer in the uh, Fife area. Uh, we'll go into a bit more detail about him a little bit later on in the video but let's have a look at the irons first. It's a muscle back style similar to uh, I think Wilson would be the commonest one we see this um, muscle bar uh, halfway up the club look at the end there you can see that quite a nice bit of weight down at the bottom uh, it's nicely got the number of the club on the back so we can see what all these are three three five seven nine and wedge uh, Norrie Thompson Ely five Scotland and rustless we've also got the number on the bottom on the face fairly widely spaced grooves not very deep whether they've been worn out or what I'm not sure nice ferrule red at the bottom white at the top and the shaft band on this one is a True Temper Pro Fit, which probably puts it in the 1960s somewhere, I think. And we can see there an R flex, regular flex. The grips on this set are very old, as you can see here, cracked uh, all the way over. And it's a pro only Avon grip. There we are. Avon Golf Pride, fine line with a patent number. And it's a ribbed grip, but it's got very hard over time. There is a slight reminder ridge on the back. We can't see that on the screen. Just have to take my word for it. But as you can see, it's it's very cracked. I really ought to replace these, but they're, they're consistent throughout the whole set. So I'm going to leave them on, uh, at least for today. And I've got the grip collars on there as well. So that's the three iron. As I say, we've got 3579 and the wedge, similar through the set. Um, what I haven't got is a sand iron, so I'm going to be using this one, which is a uh, JB Halley, Halley Pinmaster. I've got a representation of a green there, formed into a P. Nice touch there. And on the bottom, we've got, what have we got? Made in Scotland, stainless, and it says sand iron. So, that makes up the full set. So we've got three through to wedge and the Halley uh, sand iron. Just coming back to the uh, Nori Thompsons though, um, I'll just bring up a picture because I'm pretty sure, 99% certain, that these were produced um, by a company called Precision Products um, in uh, Cumbernauld, who were one of the first companies to make cast stainless steel heads using the Shore process. I think I'll probably do, um, rather than trying to squeeze it into this video, I think I'll probably do a separate video because they are quite a significant um, name in, in golf and they produce a lot of clubs. Unfortunately, I don't know who they produce them for. While we're on this subject, I'm just going to pause here and go and get the woods that came with this set. Um, I'm not going to be playing them because they need a bit of work on them. But just, uh, just bear with me. Right, these are the woods that came with the set. 
Um, they look a lot older than the irons. We can see there's no insert on there. They're a very simple um, design, more a throwback to uh, pre-war almost. You can't see it very clearly. Let me see if I can get it in the light better. It does say Norrie Thompson Ely on the transfer there. But the whole of the head, uh, the glaze, or sorry, the varnish has crackled up and shrunk over time. Uh, so I need to refurbish these at some point, which will mean trying to reproduce that uh, decal or transfer um, and re-finishing uh, the varnish. Look on the sole of this one. This is the two wood. This is the one wood. So I've got the one and two woods. I'm not sure what the loft is on that. Looking at it, it's probably uh, over 15 degrees, I would guess. It's quite quite generous. And the one wood, probably about 10 to 12 degrees, something like that. Shaft band, exactly the same as the irons. And it's a regular flex again. And the grip is the same Avon Pro only in very poor condition. So we can safely say that these were sold together as a set. And last but no means least, we've got the putter. It's another Norrie Thompson. You can see the grip there. It's the same very uh, tired Avon Pro only grip. So I'm pretty sure that this was sold along with the irons and the wood. Although it is a different style of, uh, of putter. It's a wing back and there are irons that fire this style from Norrie Thompson. And whether this was produced by um, Precision Products or not, I don't know. Uh, it says putter on the bottom. Um, the same uh, or very similar ferrule to that used on the irons. Although it's got a, a lighter coloured uh, red part there. Whether that's just faded over time, I'm not sure. What do we know about Norrie Thompson and his club making business? As usual when trying to find information on UK club makers, there's very little available on the internet. Norrie Thompson was never a prodigious club maker and so there's even less available for him. Much of what follows came from an article in the Motherwell Times printed in 1958. Born at the end of the 19th century, Samuel Norcott Norrie Thompson grew up in Ely in the county of Fife, Scotland and was educated at Ely Public School. On leaving school, he took various jobs before joining the Black Watch and serving in France during the First World War. When the war ended, he got down to the serious business of learning how to become a club maker, and there was no better place to start than in Fife, where he served his apprenticeship. Who with, I unfortunately don't know, but there was no shortage of candidates in the Fife region. In 1921, he moved to Glasgow and worked for the St Andrew Golf Company in Bridgeton as a club maker. He later settled in Motherwell to the east and in the early 1930s, a sports shop was opened in Windmill Hill Street, opposite Cross Hill Street. I've had a quick look on Google Maps to try and find where this was, but I don't have an actual address. Uh, this picture could show the shop. Who knows? It's nice to imagine that it was one of these buildings. But here, the golf club maker made the clubs and budding golfers practised in the shop behind a protective net. The demand for golf clubs increased so much that workshop premises were taken in Oakfield Chambers. A short walk away from, and from a business point of view at least, Norrie Thompson was made. Thompson first made hickory shafted clubs but from the end of the 1920s, steel shafts began to appear on the market, and soon Thompson was making these too. In the 1950s, appreciating the difficulty in obtaining quality persimmon, Thompson turned his attention towards perfecting a new type of all-metal club head, and he applied for a patent, but no evidence of this ever being granted can be found. Perhaps Norrie Thompson's biggest claim to fame was supplying clubs to the Royal Household and the staff at Balmoral Castle, where there was a private nine-hole golf course. In 1937, he made a set of golf clubs for the Clyde Alloy Company Limited, who specialised in stainless steel. The company displayed them at the Empire Exhibition in Glasgow in 1938. I wonder if any of these fine men were golfers. Norrie Thompson died in 1966, and I suspect that the business closed very soon around this date. 
I've not been able to find any adverts for the company, so to end this far too brief look at Norrie Thompson, here are the irons I've been able to find with his name on. First up, a hickory shafted Mashi Nibelik, possibly supplied by the St Andrew Golf Club. Then an 8 iron, this is a coated shaft, dot faced uh, early steel model. Then we have these attractive wing back uh, designs, which are the same as the putter I've got. And finally, the irons featured in this video. Well, that concludes part one. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in part two, where I'll be playing the clubs featured in this video on the course. Thanks for watching.